Hello everybody, welcome back to Somatic Tip Wednesday. This is video numero cinco, number five. And today I'm gonna walk you through a exercise. Yes, but before I walk you through that exercise, I want to just explain why I am walking you through this particular exercise. So there's two main reasons why I'm walking you through this. And for those of you who are new to this or just seeing this now, this is part of a series that I do every Wednesday until the series is done. And you might wanna start at the beginning because there's a reason why this is ordered the way that it is. These are self-somatic exercises that you can do and these were created by Dr. Peter Levine who is the founder of Somatic Experiencing. So two reasons why we're gonna be doing this. Number one is to help you become aware of the different sensations that are happening in your body that have occurred, will occur, or maybe are currently occurring during different states of feeling. The second reason is to help us to get acquainted with those sensations and feelings that come up in situations particularly of conflict, ex, oh my God, I'm gonna, expectancy, conflict, expectancy, frustration, and surprise. Conflict, expectancy, frustration, and surprise. What's interesting is that surprise and fear are seemingly very similar states of being because they're both states in which the nervous system is activated. So, interestingly, right, a good surprise is going to store a feeling in the body that amplifies a sense of who we are, right? That a good surprise, like somebody giving you a gift or somebody thinking about you, which we'll get into, you'll understand why I'm kind of outlining it this way, but a good surprise is something that's stored in the body that makes you feel better about yourself or who you are. And trauma is where sensations get stuck. Places in the body where we end up feeling fixed or there's a sense of fixity, there's not flow, right? Healing is flow and movement. Trauma is fixity, stagnation. And I just wanna give a little micro note on this, which is that when we notice ourselves in general, not just within the body, within our personality, within our beliefs, when we notice ourselves being calcified, being um, very fixed, we know that that is coming from trauma, right? Because a healthy organism, a healthy mind, a healthy belief structure is something that has fluidity and flow to it. We have this capacity to move within and in and out of different energies. So the transformation that we're gonna kind of be moving through today, but the transformation of trauma is really fixity to flow. So I'm gonna guide you through a series of images and pictures so that you can become aware of sensations, feelings, and images, as well as thoughts that might occur throughout this. So unlike some of the other videos, this is a very like in the moment exercise. So either watch this in the replay or do this along with me now. Find a comfortable place to sit. Maybe that's a chair, maybe that's some cushions, whatever feels right for you today. And as you find a comfortable seat, notice the support of the chair or the cushions. Notice yourself settling into or how much you can settle into the chair or cushions. Notice your breath and just notice your overall sensations, feelings, and thoughts that are current and present with you right now. Okay, so let's begin. I want you to imagine that it is your birthday. It's supposed to be a very special day, right? but you're alone today and you don't really want to be alone. You decide, you know what? I'm just going to take myself to the movies. 
So you get up and you go to reach for where you think your wallet is, where your wallet normally is. And as you do that, there is this dreadful sinking feeling that comes into your body as you reach for the wallet and you realize that it's actually missing. So take a moment to notice what sensations, feelings, images, or thoughts come in. When and if you felt the dread, where did you feel it and what did it feel like? So dread is oftentimes felt in the throat, the chest, or the solar plexus. Did you notice a tightening or a squeezing? Did you notice butterflies? Did you notice a change in temperature of your hands? Did they become warmer, sweaty, or cold? Do you notice any place that feels wobbly and any place that feels steady? And notice how as you attend to these sensations, they begin to change. Do they increase in intensity? Do they decrease in intensity? Do they tighten or loosen? So then you begin to search the other rooms of your house for this wallet. You can't seem to find it. And so you start to get a little frantic. Again, focus inward. Notice any pictures, feelings, or thoughts. You begin to slow down and feel a little bit more clear in your mind. You think, did I leave it in the drawer? Is it on the table in the dining room? Maybe I left it in the bathroom. So you think, yeah, maybe it's in the bathroom. And as you're headed to the bathroom, you're interrupted by the phone, the ringing of the phone. And it's your friend. And she's calling to tell you that your wallet is at her house. <sighs> so you take a deep sigh of relief. Take a moment to really feel that. Feel that relief. And you kind of smile at your previous state of franticness. She tells you on the phone that she does have your wallet, but that she's leaving soon. So she needs you to kind of hurry up and get there, but she'll wait for you if you're coming right now. So you start to walk to her house. You're in walking distance. You get a really brisk walk to her house. You want to get that wallet so that you can do what you want to do today. Feel your legs, feel your arms, feel the tempo of knowing that you need to get there quickly. Notice again what's happening in your body as you do that. You knock on the door and there's no answer. So you knock again, a second time, and still no answer. I must have missed her, but she told me that she was going to wait until I got here. This is really frustrating. So you start to get frustrated. Feel and notice where that frustration comes up and what that feels like. Where do you notice that? And again, any sensations, images, thoughts, feelings. Also notice the range of sensations happening between the body and the mind. Suddenly, you hear your friend's muffled voice coming from the back end of the house. And she's telling you to come on in. I guess she just didn't hear me at the front door. Again, maybe a little sigh of relief, 
So your body gets going, you head towards the back of the house, and as you come in, you go into a dark hallway. And so feel yourself, really sense yourself kind of fumbling through this dark hallway. You really can't see very well. You call to your friend, but you're interrupted by a chorus of voices. What are you feeling in your body and mind? Of course, this is a surprise and your friends have taken your wallet on purpose to lead you here. Take a moment to feel your belly, feel your heart, feel your hands and notice any thoughts, pictures, feeling sensations that are present. Guys, I'm not even gonna lie to you. I don't know if it's because I'm like really hormonal right now, but I almost cried right there at the end when I just talked about the freaking surprise. And when I was listening to this um, exercise by Peter, look at me, I'm like getting teary eyed right now. I was like crying in front of the mirror this morning. I was like, it's so sweet, the surprise, right? Like, so here's what's really interesting. This is the last little piece I wanna say before we round this out. So that our mind doesn't really know the difference between what's actually happening and what we're imagining to happen, which is why so often um, when we end up kind of looping in these scenarios in our mind, our body really responds, whether that's positively or negatively. And this exercise is a perfect example of how we can actually work with these imagined scenarios, how we can actually go back in time, we can go into the future and explore everything that comes up within the, within the body, mind, the whole entire situation here. And this exercise, like I said at the beginning, is really designed to help you to get a sense for what is really going on throughout these different experiences of irritation, frustration, expectation, or expectancy, um, surprise, conflict, right? Because these are all very real things that come up in people's day-to-day -day lives. <laughs> Stephen said, I thought you were breaking down. <laughs> yeah, you'd have to have the context of the rest of this. All right. Um, fixity versus flow, right? Just remember that. Where do I notice myself kind of going into rigidity and what might this be telling me about the response or the trauma response that my being is having right now? Um, because when we're in a state of having choice and flow, that's the state um, that we really have agency and power over our lives and within our lives. So much love to all of you, and I will see you next Wednesday for the next in the series.